A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William Steam Locomotive Part 20. While working on the turret manifold I find some 1 8 BSP blanking plugs in the old water gauge. And after cleaning the threads in the turret manifold I fit various plugs in the holes, including the water gauge connection. I drill and tap a further two holes on the front part of the manifold to take commercial 3 8 by 32 threads per inch steam taps. In the last episode, which was yesterday, I placed the globe valve, which is the isolation valve for the turret, in a pot of cellulose thinners. And unfortunately, this method of paint removal has not been successful because this isn't a new valve and the paint has been baked on by it being in service. I put the valve back in the pot of cellulose thinners and I will revisit this in the next episode. I will probably have another look at this during this episode too. I need some blanking plugs for the turret and luckily I found some ready-made in the original water gauges that I'm not going to use. There was a 1 8 BSP blanking plug in each of the top water gauge fittings. I removed these two blanking plugs and fitted them into the two holes which are now at the rear of the turret. I refer to this part of the turret as the manifold. This is the top view. The two small holes are for mounting the pressure gauge and the other two are steam takeoff points. One will feed the pressure gauge and the other one will go to the whistle. I have one quite nice elbow fitting I'll be using for the pressure gauge and I intend to fit a commercial whistle valve into the other hole. And for this I will make a nice wooden handle. I'm not ready to do that yet. I do have a shopping list which I'll be submitting to Blackgates Engineering very shortly. On the end of the manifold there is a blanking plug which is sort of half fitted, it's very tight, and I had to use two backhoe adjustable spanners, one on the manifold itself and one on the blanking plug to remove it. While I was looking through my stock of blanking plugs, I found a plug which will be perfect for the end of this, and what's more, it is already threaded 1 8 BSP. Here it is. It's going to look good in this position because it has a square end, as you can see here in this image. As per usual, I'm fitting a copper washer and applying some Loctite 542 thread sealant. Some people use PTFE tape. I see it a lot, but I don't like it. It looks messy. That's why I use this stuff. I cleaned up the end of this plug before I fitted it, and I also chamfered it so it wasn't sharp. And I fitted it by using two barco spanners once again and tightening the part into the turret manifold. I'm going to have another brief look at this quite large globe valve, and the paint's definitely not falling off it. I thought it might be a good idea to give it a really good scratching with this rough brush that I have. It didn't remove the paint, but maybe it will allow the cellulose thinners to do its job. After doing this, I tried using my polishing spindle, and that did remove the paint, but I still need a bit of help from the cellulose thinners. This is a shot of me cleaning up the threads in the turret manifold using a 1 8 BSP tap. After doing this, I used the airline to blow away any particles. This is a very good quality elbow, and on one end of it, it has a 1 8 BSP thread. The thread on the other end is a bit larger. In fact, the larger thread is exactly the same as the one on the pressure gauge. I'm not going to use that particular pressure gauge, but I'm assuming that the thread on the new pressure gauge should be the same. When screwing fittings into manifolds, sometimes you can be lucky, and it ends up in the right place. This one didn't, and I had to remove it, fit a shim washer, and on the second attempt it was a nice tight fit. Here you can see, as I've just mentioned, that the thread on the elbow is the same as the thread on the pressure gauge. The same union nut fits both. The original rear of the manifold, which is now the front of the manifold, needs to have a couple of holes drilled in it. Here I'm using a ruler to find the correct position to drill the holes. I want the holes to be exactly 5 eighths of an inch inboard from each end. I would just like to warn any experienced expert engineers watching this to turn off now. I'm going to drill a hole exactly on the midway point of the part, but I'm not using any equipment other than my eye. No wigglers or wobblers here, just my calibrated eye. I've been making models in various forms for many years, 
from rubber powered aircraft to control line aircraft, then radio control, followed by model boats, model cars, model steam locomotives, model stationary engines, the list is quite comprehensive. And I started doing this with rubber powered model aircraft when I was about 10 years old. I am now 70 years old. And believe me when I say that both of my eyeballs are well calibrated after such a long time period. Some of the comments that I get are from experienced engineers and I would like to ask these people two simple questions. Question 1. Why are you watching a tutorial which is designed for beginners to the hobby? And why bother criticising my work? I am not an engineer, I freely admit it. I've never wanted to be an engineer. I'm a musician. It's quite similar, but different. As far as I can see it, from a simplistic point of view, all you need to do this job is a lot of common sense. Think first, do the job, and it will either work or not. And if you try some of my techniques and they don't work, don't worry, just practice for a while. You should find that you get better at it with time. Or so I was once told by a girlfriend of mine from many years ago. Somehow I don't think she was talking about model engineering though. I'm running this clip at a higher speed. I would never dream of tapping anything by hand at this speed. I'm just doing it to get through the sequence a little quicker. One small point for all the clever dicks out there, sorry I mean experts, before you send a comment in to me, please be aware that I see it first, so if it's stupid, I put it in the trash bin. I also trash comments if they contain hyperlinks, which can take you to places you really don't want to go. When this manifold was originally made, the drilling didn't go quite far enough down to allow the hole drilled for the tap at 5 eighths from the end to join up with the internal hole. My drilling machine isn't brilliant, it wobbles about a bit, that's because the cast iron base is weak and flexible. And also it is a floor mounted pillar drill, which is quite useful because you can lower the table and it was useful for this job to allow me to drill a hole all the way down. To get the length, the drill bit was held in the chuck by the last half an inch of it. This operation filled up the part with quite a lot of swarf and here I'm using a compressed air line to blow all the swarf away. In order to drill the hole I did have to remove the blanking plug that I fitted to the end. But now the part is more or less complete I can refit it. And I used exactly the same method as I did before, two back or spanners, one on the turret manifold and the other one on the blanking plug. I will have to remove one of the blanking plugs behind the manifold because I need to fit another 90 degree elbow. This will supply the tap that in turn feeds the steam operated drain cocks. I'll fit this part once the boiler's in place and the turret is screwed into the boiler to make sure the existing piece of pipe fits OK. If it doesn't, I'll make another piece. That's it from me for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.